Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel, Malone Money Mindset. In this video, I'm going to discuss how Disney performed in 2019 with their movies in the box office, as well as my outlook on their movies for 2020, and then I'm going to tie it all back together with some of my thoughts on the stock and how I kind of feel as an investor going forward. So that being said, I want to jump into how they performed this year in 2019. So right off the bat, they actually had eight of the top 10 grossing films for 2019, and to put that into perspective, six out of their of those films in the top 10 actually eclipsed over a billion dollars in revenue. And to even put that into more perspective, only there was only one additional film that was a non-Disney film that hit over a billion, and that was The Joker. So I'm going to re do a recap of those six films from the lowest of, of amount of revenue to the highest amount of revenue. So starting at the bottom, the, the number six one was Frozen 2, which eclipsed a uh, billion dollars at 1.03 billion. That came out around Thanksgiving and actually hit a record for the opening week uh, for an animated film in that weekend for Thanksgiving of all time. So it performed very well. It's a kids film that does, you know, has a lot of the music tied into it. Really f a great family film and it, it continued from the, the first um, Frozen to the second one. It, it did phenomenal. So that was the number six one. The number five was Aladdin. So Aladdin was one of my favorite movies growing up as a kid. They did the remake with the genie being Will Smith. And it, honestly, it did phenomenal as well in the box office. This remake hit $1.05 billion in the box office, which was, again, another phenomenal film for Disney. Number four for Disney was the uh, Toy Story, which, again, Toy Story 4, which, you know, they had the prior three, which all did very well. Some of my favorite movies growing up as a kid as well. Toy Story 4 came in at $1.07 billion. Again, another another huge hit in the box office. Then the next one they came out with was um, Captain Marvel with Brie Larson. So her whole story with her character, that hit $1.13 billion in the box office. Another one that came in from their acquisition of Marvel. So they get all that content. And that was you know a great, a great hit for them as well at $1.13 billion. The number two uh, highest grossing film for Disney this year was The Lion King. That came out the year I was born in 1994. One of my favorite movies growing up as a kid. And I had a chance to see it. I thought it was, they did a phenomenal job with the new live action. They had uh, Seth Rogen playing Pumbaa. I thought he was hysterical in the film. So that one actually eclipsed a billion dollars as well at 1.65 billion. So that was number two for grossing this year and for on this list. And then uh, the last one, Avengers Endgame, which hit 2.79 billion dollars that is insane that is not only the highest grossing film of the year but the highest grossing film of all time so right then and there disney has already surpassed 10 billion dollars they already broke the record for the most amount by any producing um company it was around in mid this year around the next 7 billion so they've already hit um, over 10 billion in total earnings for their films which is absolutely insane yeah it's crazy that disney has already surpassed 10 billion in the total box office revenue and they just released star wars the rise of skywalker last friday on december 20th so a little update on that movie it hasn't done as well as analysts projected it was the number one top film for that for that weekend but that that's to be expected but it didn't reach as high as analysts anticipated for for box office numbers that being said going into christmas weekend that's one of the biggest weekends for going to the movies so i think they can kind of make up a little bit of ground this movie will 100% hit well over a billion dollars. Star Wars The Force Awakens hit over two billion. So I think if this if the movie doesn't come close to that two billion dollar range, it's a little bit of a letdown for the last Star Wars of the trilogy. So that being said, I think it will get close to that two billion dollar range. It's just something that I'll be watching very closely. Now I kind of want to jump into some of the films that are coming out in 2020 and what are you know what is to be expected from these films? Are we kind of going to get the same results? Or is it going to be a little bit less? So let's kind of go into analyzing those films. So the first film I want to jump into, I'm going to, going to start at like the lower tier until I think the, the higher tier towards the end. So that first one is going to be Onward. This is starring Tom Holland and Chris Pratt. So the two of them did work together in um, Avengers Endgame. So I think they have a little bit of that camaraderie. So it is a animated film. And the whole premise is that they are elf brothers going on a, a kind of an adventure to, to find some magic and help save their father. So I think it has a cute little story. I think it'll, it'll do well. But again, like I talked about those films that for Disney that hit over a billion. 
I'm not sure if this, this movie will pull in anywhere close to a billion. I, I would say it's kind of going to be in that 600 to 700 million dollar range. Then again, I'm not a movie expert by any means. I'm just trying to get a, an idea of what it could potentially pull in. But all I'm saying is I, I don't think it will pull in anything around that billion dollar range just because of, you know, what is it kind of expected from a movie like this. The next movie on the list for 2020 I want to talk about is the movie called Free Guy starring Ryan Reynolds. So this is actually from their acquisition of 20th Century Fox. So they get that ex extended content from that acquisition. So a little bit of the premise of this movie, Ryan Reynolds plays a bank teller who's actually stuck in a video game. It's called Free City. And he kind of has to become like the, the superhero and save the day. So I think it kind of, it could be like a funny movie. He, he does play that, that role very well. And I, I think it has a little bit of a buzz around. I think it could be a funny and exciting movie just to see how he's in a video game. It kind of brings me back to if anyone's seen The Truman Show with Jim Carrey, how he's kind of stuck in a, in a TV show. It's kind of like that same idea that he's kind of stuck in a video game. So I'm kind of interested to see how, how that kind of plays out and how it, everything you no know, works for that movie. But that being said, Ryan Reynolds, if you're looking at his historical movies, his highest grossing film of all time, for him was Deadpool, which hit around $700 million. So again, he's not that type of actor that can really pull that um, big box office $1 billion number. So again, I, I don't see this movie getting into that billion dollar range. I think roughly around that $600, $700 million range for him in this movie. But again, that's still like a nice little um, movie overall. So the next movie I want to talk about is Jungle Cruise. So the Jungle Cruise is starring Dwayne The Rock Johnson and Emily Blunt. This movie is actually based off a ride and attraction at Disneyland called Jungle Cruise. So the movie is all about a riverboat mission where they're kind of searching for this life tree and then throughout their mission they kind of have to fight off various dangerous animals. So I think it could be a fun family movie. Dwayne The Rock Johnson, yes, he does a lot of different movies but again like I said with Ryan Reynolds, he's never actually hit a uh, you know, billion dollars in any of his movies um, ever. His highest grossing film of all time was Luke and Hobbs, Fast and the Furious, which hit a little bit over $700 million. So again, I, I don't see this movie or Dwayne The Rock Johnson pulling in a billion dollars in a, in a movie for the box office. But again, if this gets anywhere, I think in the $600, $700 million range, I think it's still a success for Disney. The next two movies, I think actually have a little bit better chance of hitting that $1 billion overall box office. So the first one would be Mulan. So Mulan, again, is another live action remake. So similar to 2019, they did The Lion King and they did Aladdin. This is another all time Disney classic that they're gonna be doing a live action of. So I'm sure a lot of people know the whole premise of Mulan, but you know, she basically just takes her father's place in the Chinese army and she's with the guys and she's just an overall great, I think it's a great movie, one of my favorite movies growing up and it's just a good story and a, a little bit of action as well. I think you'll get a little bit more action in this one. You actually have Jet Li in it, all time great martial artist and, and actor as well. So I think he's gonna be a, a good addition to the to the movie and the live action. But overall, I, I think this does have potential of hitting that $1 billion box office hit. I wanna look back historically. So when this first released in uh, 1998, it pulled in a total of $300 million in the box office. And if we compare that to the 1994 release of The Lion King, that, impul that pulled in a little over $700 million. So it definitely did underperform uh, The Lion King. So maybe the the, um, the overall buzz and attractions not as much um, with Mulan as it is with The Lion King. Maybe it doesn't have as much of a following. But again, I think it does have potential in a year that there aren't that many hits that it, it could potentially get to that $1 billion range. So again, that's something to watch out for just to see how it performs. It's a movie that I'm definitely interested in seeing. I'm gonna I'm for sure make sure I check, check it out. But the next and last film, I think has the absolute best chance on this list and for Disney to hit a billion dollars in the box office next year. And that is The Black Widow starring Scarlett Johansson. So this whole movie, the premise is in between Civil War, Avengers Civil War and Endgame. So her character is basically by herself and she has to kind of have to search through her past and figure out like all of, that, all of her own stuff and all of her dark secrets. The thing about her character, you don't really know much. And I think she's definitely a popular character that people and fans of Avengers want to know more about. So I think that could be a really interesting, exciting movie for a lot of, you know, Avengers fans, Marvel fans, just to learn more about her character. And again, I think Zarya Johansson on her standalone brings in a lot of people to watch her, as well as just fans um, in, in, of Avengers. So I think that movie can do very well. I think it has the best shot for Disney to, to do well in the box office and hit over a billion dollars in revenue. But overall, I kind of just want to give an idea of what is to be expected for 2020 with Disney. I understand that 2019 was a historic year. It was a phenomenal year. 
And I'm being realistic. I'm saying there's no way that this year will come anywhere close to ex you know exceeding that because just the amount of content and the movies that came out last year were just too too high and too good, and they brought too much attention and attraction to movie watchers. And this year, I I'm not gonna lie, I don't think it, there's as much buzz and there's not enough of you know big hits, especially you know with Star Wars gonna be closing out the year for 2019. I, I just don't see 2020 pulling that but again they have a lot of, of movies coming out and i think overall in the aggregate they will do very well and they will still you know hopefully be profitable with their movies and they don't get too many duds in the, in, in all the scheme of things but i think that they, it will be a good year overall for the movies but it won't come anywhere near 2020's numbers but then you still have to tie in the fact that they have disney plus that is going to be growing and building the mandalorians do very well so they're going to be able to add new content and all those new movies that just came out hopefully within the next year or so so overall i am very bullish on disney stock i still see a tremendous amount of value going long term with disney stock but again this video is mainly just to give an idea of what is to be expected for 2020 how it kind of compared to 2019 it's all just for fun, just me analyzing these movies, kind of getting, you know, people talking about the movies and kind of get an idea of what is to be expected for 2020. But this is not to be looked at financial advice. It's just a matter of me kind of analyzing the stock and kind of this is a core part of Disney's business. So it's a, it's a big part to really analyze and understand what is to be expected for 2020. So that being said, I hope everyone enjoyed this video. I hope you guys may be excited for some of the movies that are going to be coming out in 2020. If you are, let me know which ones you are excited to see or any movies you saw in 2019 that you thought were, you know, really uh, good to watch or you want to still check out. So that being said, I hope you everyone enjoyed this video. Thanks again for watching and uh, I hope everyone has a great day. Bye.